Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math, MathCast, Lesson 13-1 and 13-2, Solids and Nets. We're combining them. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote tonight is by Christopher Reeves, who played Superman in the movie. He said, what makes Superman a hero is not that he has power, but that he has the wisdom and the maturity to use the power wisely. And it's kind of the same thing in math. It's great if you have good math skills, but you want to use them to help people around you and not just to show off. So our learning goal tonight is to identify solid figures and their nets. I love that picture of Superman. I love, these are my favorite Supermen right here though, Bryson and Braden, my little super guys. Um, our learning goals, our individual lesson learning goals tonight are to classify solids by their faces, edges, and vertices, and to identify the nets of solids. There's lots of figures, you're gonna, solid figures that you're gonna be learning how to identify tonight. Here's our vocabulary. Faces are the flat surfaces that make up each side of the model. Let me show you what I mean. If you look at me right now in the picture, this is a face right here, this flat surface, and each of these are faces, and you can count them, and then you know how many faces this solid figure has. The edges are the line segment where the faces intersect. So here's a face, and here's a face, and where they meet is the edge. There are lots of edges on this shape, edges that go around the base and then edges that connect the faces on the side. So these are the bases and these are the faces. It's kind of silly, but it's fun. The vertices are these points where the line segments on where the edges meet. So here's a vertex and a vertex and a vertex. And when we have more than one, we say vertice. So we would have one, two, three, four, five, six vertices on this figure. I put some pictures of some different um, solid figures up there. You can see a rectangular prism and a cube and a square pyramid and a cylinder and a sphere and a cone. So we're gonna start off with a cube. There's a Lego Superman. Scott, that's for you. I think you're the one who told me they had those. Um, there's a cube. We've talked about cubes before. We have a cube here. Um, a cube is um, a solid figure where each of the, the edges are the same length and all of the faces are the same length. So when you look at a cube, this is what it looks like solid. And then when you open it up to see the net of the cube, I can unfold all of the pieces and I get a figure that looks like this. Here's looks a little bit different than the net that is on the screen and that's okay. As long as you have four faces going vertically, these two could be anywhere. As long as you have one on each side, this one might be down here. These two might be right here. You might have one here and one here. They can be anywhere as long as you have one on each side of that vertical line of faces. So put my cube back together. You can use these in class too if you want to. Now we're talking about prisms, and a cube actually is a prism. It has a square, has two square bases. You just can't tell which ones are the bases and which ones are just the faces that go around. But here's a rectangular prism. It's called a rectangular prism, <coughs> excuse me, because there are squares or rectangles on either end. Remember, a square is a rectangle. So here you've got your squares on the bases. Oops slid right out. That's what happens when you're using manipulatives, I guess. I'm not sure I want to shove this back in here. I'm not sure I'll be able to get it all the way out. Um, ooh, I may not be able to get it out. Yay! Anyway, these are the faces, and if I count them, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six faces. Let's see how many edges I have. The first thing I like to do is count the edges up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then my connecting edges. Nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 edges on a rectangular prism. And how many vertices do you think there are? And kind of look at that picture and count them. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight vertices, and when we open it up, if I can get it out. I may not be able to get this one out. It's gonna be the same as a cube with flaps, I just really, here it is. 
four rectangular um four rectangular shapes going down and then either rectangles or squares on the end and that's a rectangular prism sometimes we just call these prisms quite frankly because they are the standard for the prism remember those faces might be anywhere along that center part the triangular prism is this one that we talked about earlier here is the triangular prism it has one two three four five faces and let's see how many edges one two three four five six and then our connecting edges seven eight and nine nine edges how many vertices do you think it has count them yep it has six one two three four five six and when we open it up to see its net in a prism, that central shape going down will always be a rectangle. These are kind of squared, but remember a square is a rectangle. So it's always going to be squares, and then your bases are going to be the shape that names it. So in a triangular prism, you've got a triangular base and a triangular base, and then three rectangular faces. And that's how we name it. It's a triangular prism. Remember, these could be up here, they could be down here. It would be okay. And then our pentagon, I don't know if I have a pentagon. I don't have a pentagon shape, but I do have um, a hexag hexagonal or hexagonal, either way, shape that looks kind of like that pentagon, which has five sides. This one has six because it's a hexagon on either end, on, on the bases. And notice that if you have six sides to a hexagon, it's going to have six faces that are rectangular going around. That always is true. Triangle has three sides, so it has three rectangular faces. A pentagon has five sides, so it's gonna have five. And you can count that on your screen. There are five rectangular faces right there. When you open this up, and you can come to class tomorrow and count the edges, vertices, and faces, but here's what it looks like. Remember, these could be anywhere along any of these rectangular faces, just so long as you've got one on each side. They don't even have to be next to each other. You could have one here and one here. These are really fun to play with. I think you'll enjoy it. And when you come to class tomorrow, I've also got some of these where you can try to practice identifying the prism or the shape by the net. So we'll do that in groups. Here's a cone. You can see, here's a cone right here, an ice cream cone is a cone too. Um, this cone has one face, it's this one flat surface. This is not flat anywhere, so we don't, we only say it has one face. It has one vertex right here at the top, this one point, and it technically, as we look at it, has no edges at all because there are no straight line segments on it. If you get into higher level math, they may say that a circle is made up of an infinite amount of small edges, and that's okay, but for our purposes, we're gonna say it has one face, one vertex, and no edges. And you can see that net there. When you open it up, I've got little lines on mine to make it fold and bend and unbend because it's hard plastic. But um, there is what a cone looks like, the net of a cone. I don't know why they call it a net. It's not like a fishing net, but it's kind of interesting. Here's a cylinder. Oh, my cylinder is upstairs. A cylinder is just like a can, though. It's going to have a circle on the base, on the bottom, and a circle on the base on the top. Um, it has two flat faces. Those circles are the two faces. It has no vertices. There are no places where the edges, there are no line segments. So there are no edges, and there are no places where the edges connect to make a vertex. So when you unroll it, you can see that you have a rectangle and two circles, one on either side. Remember, you could have one here and one here, one here and both two in the middle, or two on each end, or however, just as long as you have one circle on each side of your rectangle in the net. Here's a pyramid. I love pyramids, maybe just because I love ancient Rome and ancient Greece and ancient Egypt and there's pyramids in ancient Egypt. So we're gonna look at the triangular pyramid first. When you talk about pyramids and prisms, one of the things that kids 
in fifth grade mess up all the time on and quite frankly probably grown-ups too and you may even catch me making a mistake on the videos because they both begin with P it's hard to tell them apart um, in the word pyramid if you turn that Y upside down it kind of looks like a pyramid with a stick on top of it so I don't know if that will help you Remembering the pyramids in Egypt is what helps me. It comes to one vertex or a single point up here at the top. Um, a prism is always going to have two bases. A pyramid has one base, and it would be the one in the sand if it were in Egypt. Um, a triangular pyramid, and it's always named, again, like the prisms, by its base. You can see that this one has a triangle on the bottom, so it's a triangular pyramid. And when we unfold it, you can see the base in the middle and then the three faces of the triangles going up the side. And it will always have triangles, not rectangles, because it's got to come together to a single point. And if they were triangles, I mean, if they were rectangles, excuse me, they wouldn't. So that's our triangular pyramid. I'll end up doing a push-up if I accidentally call them a prism. Here's a square pyramid. Can you figure out why it's called a square pyramid? Yep, because the base is a square it has one square but all the faces are triangles it's there's our one flat surface our one face on the bottom and then we have four faces coming up the sides and you can see if a square has four sides then it's going to have four faces coming up the sides as well if this was an octagonal pyramid it would have eight sides right here which would mean there would be eight triangles coming together to make this single vertex so one base and four faces equals five faces in all. Our edges, we can count the edges on the base first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight edges, and one, two, three, four, five vertices. And when we open it up to show you our net, our square for our square pyramid is in the bottom, and we have four triangles coming up just like we said that we would. Okay, I was going to see if we had any different ways of showing. I've got solid figures everywhere. Here's some practice. Classify the shape that's right next to it. Pause it and push play when you've written it down. Did you write triangular prism? We know it's a prism because it has two triangular bases and then rectangles going, three rectangles going around. Because it comes to two vertices at the top, one, two, not a single vertex. It comes to two like a tent almost. It's a prism and it's named after its bases, which are triangles, so it's a triangular prism. How many vertices are there on a cube? Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write eight? Here's our cube. One, two, three, four on the top, five, six, seven, eight in all. Eight vertices. How many edges on a triangular prism? Hmm, you can actually use that figure up at the top to help you. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write nine? Let's check. Edges, that's where the two faces meet, remember? I always count the edges on the base first and then the connecting edges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine edges on a triangular prism. Practice word problems. There's Superman on Time Magazine. Would you ever have thought he would be on Time Magazine? How many faces, edges, and vertices are there on a square pyramid? We just looked at a square pyramid. Think about it as you pause and push play when you've written it down. Did you write five faces, eight edges, and five vertices? It's time to challenge yourself. Superman made two square pyramids of steel and welded the congruent bases together. How many faces, edges, and vertices does his new solid figure have? Come back tomorrow to check your answer. Finishing up. Make sure that you understand. You may need to watch this twice. 
Um, I'm excited that you've completed lessons 13-1, 13-2 solids and nets. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.